name in the what second row outside looks like we have uh geez is that lauren healy out there that'll be a fun one to watch <laughs> you got it yeah it kind of does he tell us Camera. The mic's up. So there's a lot of our uh, big name drivers out there that are uh, racing in the new TV class as well, Shannon. I mean, is that just getting some seat time or saving their car or, what, you know, are they just doing it for fun? You know, we really see that at King of the Hammers every year where you've got like Lauren Healy, Eric Miller, the Gomez brothers, the Campbells, right? So they all race. Now at King of the Hammers, there's a strategic advantage to it too. So it's a little like pre-running at it, King of the Hammers exactly the UTV. It's exactly like pre-running. They get to see most of the course and they get to you know they enjoy racing those side by sides um they've come so far technology wise that it's a sorry i've got dave cole in my ear i've got all the race ops <laughs> going on so it's making it hard to think about what i'm saying so just take my headset off and keep going um but yeah so they enjoy it because it's pre-running it's the technology is there and it's just flat out fun a lot of them do it with their kids too i mean that's how darian gomez got started was he was riding with his dad yeah, I, I dabble in UTV racing back home, and it is fun, and they are extremely capable machines for what they are. I mean, they'll, they'll hit 80 miles an hour. They can hit the whoops. They can hit the jumps. The, you know, that's why we're out here. Racing's fun, first of all, and then, you know, just out here doing what you do. Absolutely. We're really excited about it because this year uh, the UTV class was actually almost our largest class, bigger than King of – it was bigger than 4,400. It was our biggest class. I'm going to take that back. It was our biggest class this year. That was something we'd never seen before. And here we've hit 30 drivers. I mean, for the first couple of years with UTVs, we would struggle to have five or six out there, and now we had to split our class today for that. So they're really coming into their own to the point that NorCal Rock Racing is actually starting a secondary side-by-side -side series at the same park where they're going to be racing up here um, so people are going to get a chance what's a little different about ultra four right now is a lot of people ask and let's talk about this one how many utv classes do you have well we we tried that we did like 15 utv classes and it was like who's in what class what's happening here and then we said you know what if you are racing ultra four in a utv you are one class it's kind of an unlimited uh, UTV class. It is an unlimited class. You're starting to see some that almost look like Ultra 4 cars um, in the modifications that are being done to them. And we had uh, Ross Pilgreen, I think he's out of Arkansas, showed up with uh, those portals. You know, Robbie Gordon's doing a lot of testing on them. I mean, they really are becoming mini, mini Ultra 4s or mini trophy trucks. Yeah, you can really put these things through the paces. It's pretty cool. And you can buy one of these off the showroom floor and with a little bit of safety deals, you can be out here racing with us. I mean, you can buy a brand new, uh, you know, Can-Am, put a roll cage on it, put some safety nets on it, the, the right seat belts, and, you know, a little bit of TLC here and there, the safety crew, you can be out here racing. You can. And the other thing with us doing just one class, because a lot of people are like, oh, don't turbos have an advantage? Doesn't a certain type of UTV have an advantage? You know what the great equalizer is? Rocks. Rocks is the great equalizer. You can have the biggest turbo you want, but if you don't know how to drive those rocks, and we still have rocks in Ultra 4 Racing. That doesn't change for these side-by-sides. So it's cool to see a lot of them, you know, throwing a lot more armor on those cars and coming out and, and making it throughout the whole day, really. And you can see JT heading out in his K&M, leading the pack. Getting ready, we'll be uh, live racing here very shortly. Looks like we'll have uh, Phil Blurton on the pole. Right next to him should be Bullock. Row two will be Phil Caliero and Lauren Healy. Row three will be Lessage and Waller. Row four will be Versi and Henley. Row five, Uffins and Southall. Row six, Markley and Fultz. Row seven, Barnett and Stroud. So it'll be a, oh, all the way from the back, Sean Stroud. He's a, in his K&M, it'll be fun to watch. I was surprised to not see him qualify yesterday. That one really surprised me. Um, you know, Sean has done really well with us this past year. I, he started with us here last year and has grown quite a bit. 
has definitely been at the top of the podium a few times. Uh, I am going to be curious to see what happens with Casey Shear. He was our champion here last year. And if, if we remember correctly in the heat, he actually rolled and didn't finish his heat in the morning, but came back to win that main event. So I'm not counting Casey Shear out at all. I was hanging out with him in the pitch yesterday. He was putting brand new hubs on the rear. He's always working on that thing. He's tweaking. He wants to win bad. You know, he, he's uh, Jason Shear's. Uh, winner that is our uh, current king of the hammers so they're brothers they, it's in their blood they love going fast it's great to have we have so many families out here uh, and the shears are, are definitely one of them and jason becoming a two-time king this year he wanted that badly so it's great to see him doing that he is leading the the triple crown which is new for this year which uh you know we said all right let's do something really cool for our top ultra four drivers and that really cool thing became Race King of the Hammers. If you finish King of the Hammers, then go race the Mint 400. Oh, by the way, it's a month later, so all that damage you did to your car, fix that real quick <laughs> and get out there and beat the crap out of it again in those whoops at the Mint 400. And then, and then when that's all done, race the whole season with us, and then let's take you to Crandon and see what you can do doing wide open racing in Wisconsin. Yeah, so a lot of West Coast racing, then back on the East Coast for Crandon. You know, it's pretty cool to see. That's Phil Blurton up front, side by side with uh, uh, Bullock and that Textron, we saw him have a little bit of issues yesterday in qualifying. Yeah, he was absolutely, if you remember right, early on, he was just had the tire field covered and was gone and checked out, and I believe it was a left front or right front damage on the car. Uh, he tried, I think, he just like tried doubling a, a, a jump or into the off the rock section. That's what it was. He tried clearing the rock section and just came up a little bit short, broke the front end of his car. And it looks like the green flag's going. We'll see who gets that whole shot. Looks like Phil Blurton is out front, heading towards the laser nut tabletop jump. So it is Phil Blurton one and Bullock two. So Phil Calliero and Lauren Healy should be right behind him. They're heading now, through I gotta the... ask you, uh, again, I keep going back to your side-by-side -side experience with racing and th things back home. How much can like Lauren Healy and some of the other guys that are running two classes, how much can he take from a side-by-side -side race and kind of take it over into the 44? I mean, it is a very similar machine, just they're a lot bigger. I mean, IFS front, trailing arm rear, uh, so they handle very similar. It's just obviously horsepower and the wheelbase situations are different, but uh, all in all, they, they they translate really well to each other. Uh, so he's out there pre-running right now. Lauren Healy's uh, out there uh, really putting it down. It does look like Phil Blurton still out front. He, he put a great showing on at the Mint 400 this year. Now, once again, you get kind of sit the, they're kind of gapping out on each other a little bit. But once we get to those rock sections, everybody slows down and kind of crawls through, the, crawls through those sections, and they start to you know group back up again. It's like that equalizing factor. Shannon touched on it. It brings the entire field back together again. We don't need a competition yellow because we got rocks. They're heading down the MBRP launch jump as we speak. It's kind of a downhill jump and then the KMC kicker. Phil Burton really uh, throwing down a great run out there in the Metal Cloak Rock section in that Can-Am. It's a hard ride in the Cloak Works. So lap one is almost done. It's still Phil Blurton one, Ray Bullock two, and Phil Caliero three, it looks like, after lap one. And that is a complete gap jump right there. You just saw the laser nut gap jump, pretty cool. I know I keep touching on it, but I can't help to think that even at, on lap, as they enter into lap number two, that some of these guys that are running second, third, fourth, as long as they're in that top seven and have a comfortable gap between the car in front and the one in back, that these guys are basically in the saved equipment mode. We got our drone right there. Pretty cool shot of the Holly EFI 180 turn. It's got some rhythm uh, rollers back there. As you can see, <laughs> they're really pushing the limits, taking a little donkey kick there, but kept her under control. In practice, it was uh, that little section was pretty wild, so they tamed it down a little bit, got the dozer about there, smoothed it down just a tick. 
But Phil Blurton still holding his lead with Bullock hot on his heels through that steel at gunite section. You can always, and you gotta attest to this being, again, being your, yourself being a racer back home that you have a game plan when you're sitting outside your car and then all of a sudden you lose your game plan when you put your helmet on. And number two's pulling off. It looks like he's got a right front issue. So that should be Bullock pulling off. And just like that, that can change your whole strategy. Uh, you can think about it, you can talk about it. But like you said, <laughs> helmet on, a whole different ball game. If, if I got a buddy trying to pass me, I'm gonna do everything I can to put the hammer down. Yeah, a little bit of the ego and, and uh, competitiveness kicks in quite a bit. All of a sudden you're kind of swapping paint, especially if it's a friend or a relative. Because that just makes it a lot a lot better after the race, you know, <laughs> sipping on some beverages, you know, talking to your game plan you had earlier. But yeah. Phil Blurton's still out front with a commanding lead. <laughs> so Phil Blurton's still out front. But uh, in our heat one for the 4900 UTV class, the top seven that do advance was Justin Bohr, Casey Peoples, Brecken Miramon, Matt Lippman, Travis Zollinger, Darian Gomez, and Cole Clark. Do advance to the main. We are hot and heavy under heat two for the 4900 Can-Am class. Phil Blurton way out front. You know his spotters up there saying, hey, you're doing good. Run smooth, run your race. This is yours to lose. <laughs> That's the last thing you want to hear, it's yours to lose. But it's like, yeah, you can talk about the gap he's got back to second place. Uh, you can't really tell your driver to take it easy, slow it down, save the equipment at this point because all of a sudden it breaks that rhythm. You found that rhythm, and we got a really happy kid over there. We got a little, real happy little race fan. But, uh, you know, you don't want to break the rhythm of the driver. He's got this mindset going. He's got the rhythm going. He knows those lines he's taking. He, there's no one around to threaten him. If you tell your driver, to kind of, okay, now let's step it back, downshift a little bit kind of thing, that's going to break up his rhythm, and that's when crazy things happen. You're 100% correct. You had a, a race a couple years ago where I, I was leading. I had a great lead. Uh, it was a, a, an hour endurance race, and a buddy of mine flagged me down and had stop. You know, you got a, a half a lap lead, slow down, and I, I slowed down a little bit and I clipped a tree uh, not bad enough to hurt anything so I kept going I picked my pace back up to race speed and that's just where my zone was so as long as you're under control you know that fine line out here there aren't too many trees to clip but uh, every corner you could bicycle you know there's these jumps you could kick funny the metal cloak rock section yeah, that jump right there, yes, in the wind. These cars are getting actually, while they're in the air, being pushed sideways and landing probably three, four feet off to the side of where they were taking off when they hit the ground. And this, this, talk about a strong wind and all today. It's picking up a little bit still, but it's, what, now around eight, nine, ten miles an hour. But uh, talk about absolutely perfectly comfortable conditions right now. This is the 2018 Metal Cloak Stampede here at the Prairie City SVRA just outside of Rancho Cordova, California. Outside of Sacramento here in Northern California. It's a beautiful facility, a beautiful track, and a beautiful day. And that's one big lead right there. That is just a huge lead. And I believe Phil Blurton's heading out on his last lap. Number two, Phil Caliero. Number three, Jacob Versi, number four, Lauren Healy, number five, Jim Hinnell, number six, Scott Lesigi, number seven, Greg Uffins, eight, Ray Bullock, nine, Dan Waller, 10, Randy Southall, and 11, Daniel Markley. We've got eight cameras out on course to bring you live action all day long. So thank you everybody back home for tuning in. Ultra4Racing.com slash live. And even if you're here on scene, you can turn into your smartphone, get a little more information from what you can just physically see. Because like I said, we have cameras everywhere. Uh, they dip down into that Holly EFI. You might not be able to see them, but you could tune in and see it. Even these drone pictures, I'm still amazed at the crazy windy conditions we had yesterday but yet the drones were in the air they were flying and talk about steady pictures and it looks like we have a car so we do have a oh, yellow, yellow corner zone, so yeah. we saw Blurton slow down uh, doing that that making sure everybody's okay 
He passes the, the corner of the yellow flag and it's back under race speed. So Phil Blurton still out front on his last lap. So the 944, no limit, Can-Am, Phil Blurton has this thing all but wrapped up. We this talk about the drivers, I'm sorry, Miles, we talk about the drivers and finding their rhythm, and you don't want to break up that rhythm and keep it going. Uh, it's, it's, sometimes it's the machines, too. Machines want to go fast. They don't like running slow, so you got to run what the machine gives you. And look at this. That's... Phil Burton and Phil Caliero hot on his heels, so it'll be one, two, it looks like. I thought he might get him in that rock section. And speaking of the metal cloak rock sections, uh, they will be changing. So the checkered flag does go to Phil Burton. Phil Caliero, two. So we'll get you the information as quickly as we can. Looks like number three should be Jacob Versi round out the podium for heat number two for the 4900 Can-Am class. We have Mario there rigging the checkered flag, part of the NorCal racing crew. He's at every single race, always good to see. This is the first race for the Laser Nut Western Series. Well, take care of the two UTV heat races. Uh, moving in now to, I believe, is the 4600 heat race number one. So the 4600 Pro Comp stock class. We'll get those guys lined up, get the course cleared. Yeah, like we touched about earlier, that uh, a lot goes on between races as far as clearing the track.